sometimes I just like talking about bad mods. It's that simple. Luckily, for the most part, we've grown past the whole, oh, this Pokemon isn't bad, it's just underrated, when talking about something like Cryagonal. We've just kind of all grown up and realized that, yes, some Pokemon are bad. So now we can ask ourselves, just for the sake of asking ourselves, how do we make them less bad? And that's what this video is about. We're gonna take 10 Pokemon that need to be improved, why they're bad, and how we're gonna make them less bad. Also, before we continue, if you like this type of content, like and subscribe, because we have a decent bit of videos like these for you guys to watch. And also, if you like lo-fi and other kinds of chill music, go check out Luna's World, where I'm writing a book about this character. And I'm also streaming again on Twitch, where you can catch me shiny hunting. When I'm live, I have no idea. Just follow and keep notifications on. But with that said, let's get going. So, I know I've definitely mentioned Boltund before, and there is not a single person on this planet who wants to see Boltund succeed more than I do. Okay, that's a lie. There are probably more dedicated fans. Boltund sadly just falls short from, firstly, mediocre attacking stats that not even Strongjaw can fix, and secondly, a lack of the move Ice Fang. In my opinion, those are the only two things holding Boltund back. It's got a base 121 speed, and yeah, it's frail with no defense to speak of, but that's how glass cannons work. This is a glass cannon, but Game Freak forgot the part where it's a cannon and just kind of made it glass. So we should just take its base 90 attack and put it to base 110. This will give it what it needs to actually threaten what strong electric types are supposed to threaten, and then give it Ice Fang so it isn't automatically forced out by any ground type. They say every dog has its day, but Boltund never got to have one of its own. And I think we fixed that. Where do I begin with Detective Dusknoor? It has Poltergeist, finally, which makes it almost capable. But even despite Poltergeist, Dusknoor is still one of the worst ghost-type Pokémon probably of all time. How'd this happen? Well, first and foremost, they wanted Dusknoor to be a bulky attacker. Yet, they gave it such amped-up defenses with barely any HP to work with, making it more frail than it looks. Secondly, its attack stat just isn't high enough. Base 100 attack was starting to look very outclassed by the time it appeared in Gen 4, and yet, Game Freak had the gall to leave it at a number that was looking less and less impressive by the generation and say, good luck. The worst part is Dusknoor would have been an excellent Trick Room Pokemon, especially given that it learns Trick Room, but it can't even take advantage of it because its HP and attack stats just don't cut it, and they never have. Oh yeah, and let it use Recover, it'll be fine. Honestly, just give Recover to the entire Dusknoor line. What is Game Freak actually afraid of? This Mon becoming the ghost-type equivalent to Chansey and Blissey? Yeah, right. So long as Dark beats Ghost, even a ghost-type with Recover will fear knockoff. You ever ask yourself if the Pokémon made in Generation 6 were specifically made to be, for the most part, underwhelming? Like, off the top of my head, the only three really good Pokemon introduced in Gen 6 that weren't legendaries are like Greninja, Talonflame, Aegislash, and Klefki. Halucha was pretty good in Gen 6 too, but didn't become truly real until Gen 7, where Tapu Koko descended from the heavens and gave the bird its new favorite seed. Where am I going with this? I'm saying that it feels like they made Furfro underwhelming. I've talked about Furfro before, so I'm gonna make this brief, but to keep it short and sweet, it basically just has no real moves. The best you're getting is your normal stab, zen headbutt, wild charge, u-turn, and sucker punch. Yes, it gets stuff like dark pulse, surf, and grass knot, but with a special attack of 65, all I'm saying is Furfro needs more moves. And instantly, if it got more moves, it would be like actually kind of playable. What moves would I give it? Wish, because I don't like giving stuff recover, and then knockoff to hit ghosts without having to pray that they fall in the sucker punch. 
Wish could make it a solid fast support by wishing and then U-turning, with knockoff being an extra layer of support. I think it has a fine ability, and mostly fine stats. Maybe amp his attack up from 80 to 100 so it can be extra playable, but what this Pokemon is missing is just moves, which is something they've had no issue giving out to normal types of the past. You're telling me that Clefable, Chansey, and Wigglytuff can have just about any move they want, yet Furfro can't get Wish, Knockoff, or some way to boost a stat that isn't its already solid defense. It's like they made Furfro, didn't know what they wanted to make Furfro other than mediocre, and then slapped some sort of random stuff on it and called it a week. If Furfro were introduced in Gen 8 or Gen 9, it would have gotten better stuff. I can promise you that. It astonishes me how so many Pokemon from Generation 1 have either aged really well or have gotten some sort of new gimmick attached to them. So many Gen 1 Mons have gotten a Mega or a G-Max form in order to make sure that adults who grew up with Gen 1 play the new game. And yet, for some reason, Hypno hasn't gotten anything crazy. No Mega, no exclusive Z-Move, no G-Max form, no regional variant, no ridiculously broken move that would make it relevant, like, I don't know, Shell Smash Cloister. In fact, it was nerfed from Gen 1 to 2 because of the special split where they took away its special attack. Now, we just have a Mon that struggles from bad stats and nothing in its move pool that's good enough to warrant usage in a serious match. Our friend here was fine in exactly Gen 1. And ever since then, it has done nothing of note. How do we fix this? Well, we're gonna need to take that 73 special attack and then turn it into the 115 that it used to be. This would make Hypno infinitely more playable by itself, because now Hypno would be capable of doing this thing called damage, which it hasn't done in what feels like eons. Of course, that would make it playable, not particularly good. So how do we make it good? They had no issue giving Alakazam recover, so let's give it to Hypno and then combine that with some coverage, like Aura Sphere and Mystical Fire. And then Hypno becomes officially kind of all right. It's still bad, but these moves and that amp the special attack might just take it out of ZU. Who knows though? Okay, so, I think this is one of those segments where I don't really have to say much, right? We've talked about the speed issue before and how some Pokemon have almost everything they need but a speed stat. Yeah, this applies to Zangoose. Just up the base 90 speed to like 100 or 102 speed and it can actually become playable in the lower tiers. If you want to break the Pokemon, then you give it like 120 just so you can always get the jump on Roaring Moon. Just make Zangoose faster, and it becomes an amazing Toxic Boost Sweeper. It's that easy. You don't need to give it more bulk. It's not supposed to live. It's supposed to find an opportunity to fish for the Toxic Orb Boost, and then get to button mashing. The issue is that its speed is too bad for it to do that against modern teams. And hey, modern problems require modern solutions. And my solution is to just make Zangoose faster so it can do what it was designed to do. Does Seviper need to be improved even more than Zangoose? Yes, but I feel like that's a video on its own that I would make if this video got a thousand likes. Lycanroc Midnight will always be a mod that just kind of makes me angry because of how dirty it got done. They really gave this thing low speed in exchange for a defense buff that is so minor that it may not even exist. And now it's far and away the worst of the three Lycanrocs. And it's not even close. Lycanroc Dawn gets Sandrush. Dusk gets Tough Claws. And what does Midnight get? Vital Spirit and No Guard. You know what it should have gotten? Adaptability. That way, you can at least say that you traded some speed for power and Lycanroc Midnight could have become a wall breaker of sorts. Speaking of which, did you know that Lycanroc Midnight is the only version of Lycanroc that doesn't get a Cell Rock? A Cell Rock being 
the signature Lycanroc move. So that's another thing I'd fix. It feels like they went out of their way to make the version of Lycanroc that Olivia uses the bad one, just so people didn't struggle too bad with her fight. And now look at the consequences of your actions, Game Freak. You basically created a whole form and then asked us to not use it. After these fixes, this Pokemon is probably fine. Lycanroc Midnight has plenty of coverage moves to work with, like Close Combat, Play Rough, Iron Head, and Psychic Fangs. It just needs adaptability and a Cell Rock so it can be a slow wall breaker, rather than a frail-filled hit taker. Maybe also give it Earthquake. It deserves it. Magmortar is a Pokemon I will never understand the design philosophy of. More importantly, I don't understand why it only has 83 speed. That's it. That's the one thing holding it back. Yeah, it has low physical defense, but that makes sense. And they gave it flame body to compensate. The 83 speed, however? Is it because of the cannons? Are the cannons slowing it down? That makes sense, I guess. But because the cannons are slowing it down, Magmortar doesn't quite do anything. Despite having base 125 special attack in strong coverage, it doesn't hit hard enough to be a consistent wall breaker. And because it has base 83 speed, it doesn't hit hard enough to be a consistent offensive breaker. So it's just kind of left floundering around in mediocrity. So I'd say one of two things. Either take that speed and amp it up a little bit, but nothing too crazy. But maybe like base 95 speed and in exchange, make its attack stat it isn't using 83. I think that's a fair trade, and that extra bit of speed will at least let it get the jump on Tinkaton, Molebreaker Excadrill, Archiladon, and Hisuian Samurott. I don't even think they went out of their way to make Magmortar bad or anything. They just kind of missed the mark on upgrading Magmar more than anything else. So you know how some Pokemon are quite literally held back by its speed? The same applies for Past Simeon. Bro looks like a fast monkey, but doesn't behave like a fast monkey. Worst part is, it has everything else it needs. It gets U-Turn, Knock Off, Bulk Up, Close Combat, Iron Head, and Gunk Shot. It even gets Pain Split to kind of sort of take advantage of its surprisingly solid bulk. But its speed? Its speed is too much of a detriment to it. I think you do one of two things. You either buff its 60 special defense to 90, so it plays into its role as a bulky fighting type more, or you take its 80 speed and buff it to 95 or 100, so it can be a strong wall breaker that doesn't automatically lose to something like Bruxish. The reason I'm saying one or the other, and not both, is because fixing both its special defense and speed would probably make it really absurd. Pokemon typically aren't designed to have good bulk, good speed, and good attacking stats unless they're either a legendary or something Game Freak really wants to push the popularity of. Now, which would I rather do? Unironically, buffing in special defense instead of its speed sounds sillier, because that way Passimian wouldn't basically become Infernape but again, and have its own unique identity with those well-rounded stats and perfect amount of bulk for what it was supposed to be doing. My proposed way to make Per Ugly better is incredibly simple. It's not a buff to its stats, its move pool, or any of that nonsense. No. In fact, I believe that all Per Ugly is missing is an item. That's right, an item. No, not a Pruglite or a Pruglium Z or anything so silly. I'm talking about an item that already exists, or well, used to exist. The Berserk Gene is an item that was introduced in and only ever was in Generation 2. What it did was it was a one-time use consumable item that gave the Pokemon that switched in a free Swords Dance, but the Pokemon would become confused. This doesn't sound too crazy due to the confusion chance hindering it and making it very luck-based. However, Per Ugly has the ability Own Tempo, which means it not only can't be confused, but is also immune to Intimidate. Imagine, if you will, giving a Pokemon a free Swords Dance, with an attack stat that cannot be dropped outside of burning it, all at the cost of its item slot. 
That there sounds like a hilariously potent late game sleeper that can be played around with proper defensive play, or just using roar. But hey, when it does come in exactly that one time, it's dealing massive damage and busting a hole through the opponent's team that no amount of repairman can fix in time. Slurpuff is a Pokemon I believe to be almost perfect. Yeah, that's right. I believe that for the most part, Slurpuff is a completely fine Pokemon that isn't bad in the slightest. It's got Sticky Web and various support moves, but it also has Belly Drum and Unburden, which I find to be more fascinating. They even gave it Drain Punch to get its HP back that it used up from Belly Drum, and then lets it punish Steel types for thinking they can exist in Slurpuff's space. However, there lies exactly one problematic issue that causes Slurpuff to go from potentially one of the most dangerous Pokemon of all time to a Pokemon that is relegated to be worse than Hawlucha and Sneasler. It can't hit poison types for the life of it, and Psychic from Slurpuff doesn't even Oko Viper. Now, if we were to give Slurpuff Stomping Tantrum and Psychic Fangs in order to hit Poison types, with Psychic Fangs also being able to hit through screens, I think that Slurpuff would actually be able to leverage its excellent typing as well as its unburdened belly drum set to great success, being able to break through just about anything. And also, it would create yet another Pokemon that can annihilate Toxapex, which I am always for. And if you think that Game Freak is afraid of Slurpuff's power and what it could do if given proper coverage, no, they are not. They have made Pokemon more broken with less thought, like Dragapult, Gliscor, King Gambit, and Sneasler. I think that these buffs will definitely, at the very least, make the Pokemon in question a lot more playable. Some of these are minor buffs, and some of these can fix every issue the Pokemon has. But these are my opinion, and let me know what Pokemon you think needs to be buffed and how you would fix it.